This is the Bryson Denim problem. We're going to go through it. It has an objective function that's integral from 0 to uh, 1. That's going to be u squared. That's going to be our acceleration right here. And then we have a velocity, which it relates to acceleration, and then a position that relates to velocity. Now, the unique thing about this problem, and one of the reasons why it's somewhat difficult to solve, is we have a path constraint right here that x has to stay below the value l. And also, we want to end up at v equals negative 1, starting at v equals 1. So that's just a fancy way to write two initial constraint and a final constraint for velocity. And then also, the x value has to end up at 0. So basically, what we're going doing here is um, you know, if this thing had to take off, stay below a certain ceiling, and then come back down. So let's go ahead and just see if we can work through this problem, set it up in Python, and then solve it and analyze the solution. Okay, first of all, we want to import some packages. I'm going to import NumPy, and we'll import matplotlib. And then we also want to get Gecko. All right, so those are the three packages we're going to need. Now we need to define time. So I'm going to define um, Gecko, which is my model, and I'm going to say remote is false. So it's going to solve locally instead of remotely. And then I'm going to define my time. That's going to be NumPy. I'll do lin space between 0 and 1. By default, there are going to be 50 points there. So I want to extend that just a little bit more. Say number of time points is 101. All right, let's go down and define our variables now. We have some initial conditions and also a path constraint. So I'm going to have x, v, and then u. So x is position, v is velocity, and u is acceleration. I'm going to have an initial condition of 0 and an upper bound of 1 ninth. Also, on velocity, I have an initial condition of 1. I'll show you later how to define the final conditions. And then also on u, we're just going to start at negative 6. Um, and let's go on to equations. Equation, the first one is x, and we're going to have the derivative of it, which is going to be dt. And we, don't forget the open and close parentheses there. Then you have a double equal sign, and then velocity. The next equation, very similar, it's just dv dt equals acceleration. Now the final conditions are the part that there's two there are two different ways to do this. Um, we can either do a soft constraint method or a hard constraint. We also need to have the objective function, which is the integral from 0 to 1. So we just want to integrate that, and we need some final conditions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to define a vector p. And from 0, 0 to 1, it's going to be equal to 0. And then at the very last point, it's going to be equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to make the very last point equal to 1, p, negative 1. That makes it the last point. Or I could have put p, 100. All right, so my final, I'm going to create a new parameter, and I'm just going to give it a value of p. So then I can multiply final times whatever, and it's going to be 0 everywhere, and then just 1 at the end. Now, I'm going to start off with some soft constraints. There are two different ways to do this. Either you can penalize it with an objective function, that's a soft constraint method, or you can put a final hard constraint. The advantage of a soft constraint is that if it can't quite reach the final conditions, it'll still likely give you a feasible solution. So let's go ahead and do a soft terminal constraint. I'm going to minimize x squared. So at the very end, I want it to be 0. And then I also want to minimize v plus 1. So I don't want to do v squared equals 1, because then all the places where I want it to be 0, it's going to be 0 equals 1. So what I'm going to do is multiply times final on each of those. And so it's only equal to 1 at the very end and 0 everywhere else. So it only penalizes just the very last point to say this is what I want to get in the end. Okay, I'm also going to multiply by a large number there because I want to 
encourage it to meet those final constraints. Okay, now here is the hard terminal constraint. Um, so this one is similar to the last approach, but we're going to create two new parameters. Okay, and we're going to free them. So normally they're fixed, but we're going to make them calculated. And the reason why we do that is because there are no derivatives associated with these. So we can go ahead and define them, and then we'll create some equations that connect them to x and v. So I want to fix the final condition at 0, and then fix this other final condition at negative 1. And then I just want to connect to the endpoint variables with these parameters. So I'll create some equations, x final equals x, and v final equals v. So both of these methods have advantages and disadvantages, and we'll take a look at how they do. Okay, now on to the objective function. We have an integral here. I'm going to define a new obj uh, variable, and that's going to be an intermediate variable. Okay, I'm going to have 0.5 times the integral of u squared. All right, and then I can minimize objective, and I want to just do just the final of that because I'm going to be integrating it. Okay, as I use u value, it's going to go up. And I want to make sure that is as low as possible. So I just want to minimize just that point, not all of them in between. So I have to multiply by final. Now let's go ahead and solve this. OK, so I'm going to use I mode 6, which is dynamic optimization. I'll just use nodes equals 2 and solve. OK, so let's go ahead and just run all of these. Um, I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller just so we can see it. Okay, kernel, and let's see, let's see, uh, and run all cells. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run all of those, and let's just see if it can come up with a solution. All right, so there it is. It um, solved with the IP out solver, and it solves locally, and a successful. There was a successful solution. Solution time was about a quarter of a second, and you can see the objective function is equal to 4. Okay, but now let's go ahead and look at the results. So I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly, creating a figure with um, four subplots here. First of all, I'm going to just plot my constraint, um, you know, going up to the 1 9th. I'll go ahead and show this figure while we're generating it. So this is that red line there at the top. I just want to show what is the constraint, so see if it was violated. Okay, and then I also have um, just some x less than 1 ninth. So I put some LaTeX in there. All right, and then I have as well the black line for the velocity. All right, line width 2, and I put a label there as well. And I'll just put position there for the Y label and have it choose the best location. Okay, let's go on to the second one. This one is going to be the velocity. Okay, so I'm just going to plot the velocity value with a blue line and give it a label and make it look nice. Okay, let's go down to the third subplot here. Here's the U value. This is the acceleration. And I'm going to do a red dash line and give it a label. And there's the Y label thrust with the legend. All right, and let's go on to this final one. Here's the objective function. Now you can see the objective value. I'm going to do a green line and put in the integral, one half integral of u squared. And then I also want to put in some text. I want to put in this final value of the objective function, just so I can see it on the plot. So I'll go ahead and round off to two, just two decimal places, and I'll get the objective function value and round to two. Okay, so that's it. Um, let me go ahead and run that, and there you can see the plot that we generated. So let's just take a look at this and see, you know, let's try to make sense of this 
result and see uh, if you know what we had here if that uh, makes sense with the equations that we had and so we're trying to minimize this value right here as low as possible and you can see that um, the u value goes to zero right here so it doesn't change it very much because you know u is zero it's able to meet the final constraints here's the velocity of negative one and here's the x value of, of uh, zero x value started at zero as well velocity started at one so I had to find the way to get to this final point right here with minimum I wanted to try to get to the minimum value of u as much as it could so along the middle there's not much contribution to it you could make this time horizon longer and it would likely just continue at you know, zero additional and then at the end it would come up again okay and you can see here that it did not violate this constraint so that's the other thing you want to look at in this is to just make sure you're not violating any of the constraints you can go through this and just look at all your terminal constraints make sure they're all satisfied okay let's get back up here because there's one other thing I wanted to check because we use the soft constraints and uh, let's see what happens if we use a hard constraint instead so this is where we're just fixing the end values instead of using an objective function to define the endpoints alright and this just for comparison let's just see how many iterations it took alright it was about a quarter of a second and it took 21 iterations alright and so let's go ahead and just restart this and run all the cells again and let's just see how long it takes maybe fewer iterations um, and also the objective function value we want to watch those two things okay so it ran and it looks like it took about the same amount of time and it was about the same objective function value let's just go look at the plot so the plot looks very similar so both ways they worked well sometimes what you want to do though in these dynamic optimization problems one of the things that I do if I'm having a hard time solving it is sometimes I use the objective function method right here to help guide it guide the solution but then I use this to terminate and make sure that all of those constraints are satisfied so you can even include both of them if you want okay so if you want to check out more information uh, there is this link with additional problems and a, an entire course dedicated to machine learning and dynamic optimization uh, here is the uh, Bryson Denim problem now if you go to right, uh, apmr.com slash do this is the dynamic optimization course and there are more benchmark problems here on the right you can see those um, under benchmarks or um, more benchmarks right here so benchmark problems are nice because especially when you're learning you can uh, go through some of these simple examples where you almost know the solution and uh, it helps you exercise uh, for when you solve large-scale or real problems I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave any comments uh, down below.